thank you very much for being with us at this journey. Uh, let first of all introduce myself. I'm Thiago, CEO, of Industrial Engineering, and founder of Voito. Uh, we have 13 years of history, and now we are on the online marketing, delivering knowledge uh, for Brazilian students. And we are really, really proud to bring you here to talk for with our audience. I read your book when I was graduating, Lean Healthcare book, and it mm. was a great, uh, it helps me a lot to develop my skills in continuous improvement and these things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, thank this you. One, yeah, Lean did, Healthcare. Did you read it in English or Portuguese? The Portuguese one, the Portuguese one. Earlier this year, I've done uh, two different webinars for Brazilian audiences, and I had a chance to visit Brazil for the first time before the pandemic. It would have been November of 2019. Uh, it was in Curitiba. Wow, it's great. It's great. So I hope it happens again. And uh, yeah. uh, when it happens, I have a, a great invite to you. I saw at your blog that you have a pizza oven, right? <laughs> Something yes. like this. So I, I get really impressed with it. And I have one too. That, that one is mine. And when you come to Brazil, I, I, I'd like to invite you to come here and uh, try my pizza away. All right. Wow. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's great to see. Yeah. Yeah. And I hope we uh, look forward to getting to do that. Yeah. Yeah. It would be great. Awesome. Yeah. So, Mark. Uh, we're supposed to talk about measures of success, stop to react to noise and lead for consistency. Uh, the first question is, how can we define what is noise? So if we're looking at, we could call it a metric, uh, a performance measure, say we're looking at something at our corporate dashboard. And that metric, if we chart it, and this is one of the important things. So actually, even to do a simple run chart or a line chart of 12 data points or more shows us the context of what's happening to our metric over time. Because what happens with a lot of business metrics is they are basically just fluctuating um, around a stable average. And it's possible that these data points, some are that are better than average, some that are worse than average. Some of those data points we might describe as noise. So we want to be careful that we stop reacting to those data points that are noise and instead react only to data points that we could call statistical signals. So we have noise, we have signals, and we use a tool called a process behavior chart. It's a form of control chart. If people uh, know that terminology, it's, it's basically a run chart that then has three additional horizontal lines added to it. The average that's calculated and plotted on the chart. And then there are calculated lower and upper limits that go around the data. They're, they're plus or minus three sigma around the average. And so that chart and those lines and three simple rules help us detect signals. Anything that's not a signal is noise. So the easiest um, signal to see visually is any single data point that goes above the upper limit or below the lower limit. Those data points are worth explaining or researching or understanding or doing root cause analysis about. So I think you know the advice for, for business leaders is stop reacting to all of the noise, do react to signals when you see them on a process behavior chart. That's really interesting. But what kind of action the leaders can take to avoid the overreact to the change? Well, I think, you know, the the main thing is using process behavior charts and, and use those those three basic rules that help us filter out noise so that we can be reacting to signals. So that first rule, again, is any data point that goes outside the calculated lower and upper limits. The second rule is anytime you have eight consecutive data points that are all above the average or all below the average. That would tell us that the process performance has shifted. Um, oh, and then the third rule is to look for either uh, three consecutive data points or three out of four consecutive data points that are closer to the limit than they are to the average. If there's a cluster of data points, I'm circling a chart that I see in my mind. Um, 
So again, like we 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 want to avoid or you know, we want to stop overreacting, stop reacting to noise. So again, the process behavior chart helps us determine when we've got signals worth reacting to. Now, if if we have a chart and a metric that shows nothing but noise and we don't like where the level of performance is, we can still improve the system or we have to improve the system. So the way we can do that is to ask a question like, why is the average and the range of performance not where we want it to be? That's a different question than asking, well, why was that last data point bad? Um, so we want to be systematic. We need to understand our systems and um, you know, we, we, we can stop reacting to every up or down in our metrics. Yeah, yeah. What, what about the companies, Mark? Uh, what are the simple strategies that can be taken to help leaders focus on the right thing? So we want to focus on the right thing, and that means, you know, again, stop focusing on um, the wrong thing. You know, stop running your business off of two data point comparisons of saying, well, last month was worse than the month before. That could very well be noise um, in the metric. Um, a lot of businesses will just continually make two data point comparisons, one month against another, one year against another, even one hour against the previous hour. So better yet is to create a chart. Look at more than two data points, look at 12 data points or 20 data points, plot the dots as, um, my friends in England and the National Health Service say they have a hashtag on social media. Plot the dots. Draw a chart. Like we are, we we can see so much more even from a simple line chart. That's much more visual, or it's a more helpful kind of visual than just a long list of numbers. Um, so plot the dots, and then you know better yet, use a process behavior chart. Because um, if we visualize the data and plot the dots but then still have the behavior of asking people to explain every data point that's worse than the average or explain every data point that's worse than the one before. We, we just, we end up wasting a lot of time. We frustrate people. We uh, distract ourselves from the important improvement work, the systemic improvement work that we should be doing when, when all we're doing is reacting. We don't really, that doesn't leave us enough time to do good systematic improvement work. You know, uh, I learned uh, on the management, management books that it's really important to focus on data or to make the, your decision based on data, all right? But I, I, I did a, an interview here a couple of days ago with Natalie Nixon. She talked about uh, creativity, innovation, all this stuff. And uh, it was really interesting, her point of view, uh, saying about how important it is to make decisions in uh, 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 based on your intuition, all right, and not only on data th uh, things. What, what do you think about it? Well, I mean, there, there are some things that are hard to measure. Um, I mean, the, the risk with intuition is that intuition could be wrong. So how do we then evaluate to see if her intuition was correct or not after the fact? Um, you know, I think when at all possible, having data is really useful. That said, a lot of people talk about making data-driven decisions when it's really intuition. You know, they'll, they'll have rules of thumb that say like, well, those last two data points were red. We've color-coded them red because they're not meeting target. Um, they're, they're acting on maybe an intuition that says, well, two data points are red, so therefore there must be a root cause when that might not actually be the case. So while I, I, I can appreciate the, the need and the role for intuition, um, I, I think we have to be careful that that intuition doesn't lead to rules of thumb uh, about how we look at data that, that ends up being counterproductive. Sure, sure. So let's go to our students' question. The first question is from Lincoln Reis from Juiz de Fora, Minas Gerais. Mark, can you give me three tips on how to manage a metric and deliver real value? Yeah, I mean, that's a good question. I mean, I think um, I've already you know, talked a little bit about how to manage metrics and, and maybe to elaborate on that. We don't really manage the metric. What we're doing is managing a system 
the system of work, the system of our business that includes the people and our processes, that gives a metric as an output. Um, so we have to, I think, really think about managing people, leading people, managing a system. We need to improve the system in a way that leads to better results. Now, there, there's the part of the question I thought, you know, think is interesting of, you know, what does it mean to deliver real and sustainable value? Um, if, if managers and leaders are, um, you know, kind of, you know, earning their keep, uh, earning their paycheck, that means hopefully they're driving improved performance and, and, and better in a statistically meaningful way, not just a little bit better, but something that shows a real meaningful shift in performance as a process behavior chart can help detect. So I think one of the keys for leaders to really drive improvement is to, again, you know, stop being so reactive. Like there's a lot of things managers can do and they say, well, look how busy I am. Therefore, I must be helping. And that might not really be true. So, um, you know, I, again, encourage people stop reacting to the last data point, try to be more systematic in the way they're looking at metrics and the way they're prioritizing improvement. You know, the, the, the cover of um, the book here kind of illustrates a roller coaster. And, you know, we have the ups and downs and we scream and we get excited and sometimes we get scared. You know, that, that roller coaster really isn't a good thing. You know, the, the, the picture, the illustration of the roller coaster here is meant to illustrate maybe a little bit of our current state where we're just reacting to everything equally. And when we learn to filter out the noise, react only the signals, maybe we can, we can get off of that roller coaster, have a little bit more stability, less excitement and screaming, um, but actually see real improvement instead of just, you know, up and down, let's, let's, let's actually move performance um, continually in a better direction. Great, great. Let's go to the second question from Alicia Souza, Bauru, São Paulo. Mark, the big data is a very important to make correct decisions. How to choose and apply great indicators for the team? So, yeah, I mean, that's a, that's a, a really good question. I mean, a lot of what I've been talking about today and, and a lot of what's in my book, it's about the question of how do we treat performance measures over time. There's a really important question that we need to talk about first of, well, what should we be measuring? Um, sometimes the things that are easy to measure aren't necessarily the most meaningful things to an organization. Sometimes organizations measure things and you ask, well, why are you measuring that? Why are you putting that on a chart? It might be a matter of habit. So, well, we, we've always measured that or we were told um, to measure that. Uh, sometimes organizations have too many performance measures. And when people, when leaders are reacting to every up and down in every metric, that ends up creating more distraction, more chaos, and ends up wasting more time. Um, so sometimes you have to go through an exercise and ask maybe, you know, what are the key, what's a small number of metrics that allows us to really gauge the health of the organization? Um, you know, we, we can draw a parallel to our own personal health. Like there, are, we, we could step on the scale. That number on the scale might be one measure of health, um, but that one measure might be misleading. That number might be higher, but it's possible that we've gained muscle, which might not be bad. Um, there are, um, you know, so we, we sometimes we need a couple of organizational metrics that help us understand, is the organization healthy? Is our health moving in the right direction? Like I, you know, I think personally for health, there there is no single health score that that I have, but there are many things I could measure, and the things I measure might be different than what you measure based on my age or my own condition, right? So one thing I have an eye doctor, ophthalmologist who every four or six months measures the pressure in my eyes because I've, I'm on medication, make sure that number's not too high. So for me, that's an important measure because if that number was too high and if that high pressure was untreated, I could lose my vision over time. But that doesn't mean the metric that's right for me is going to be the right metric for you. So anyway, back, back to the question. I think you know, a leadership team needs to, to uh, have a discussion around what measures are really important 
some of those measures may be defined by our customers. And you know, make sure we're not just measuring everything that's easy or possible to measure. Um, let's, let's talk as a team. Sometimes fewer measures are better, even if we have the capability now with technology to measure and track all sorts of things. Really? Okay. Let's go to the last question, the last student's questions. It's from Marcílio Nagashima, de Ivaiporã, Paraná. What tips would you give to help a manager present their data and generate meaningful insights? Well, I mean, again, you know, I might be at the risk of repeating myself. Some of the advice is really, I think, simple and straightforward. Um, stop looking at lists of numbers whether that's two numbers or 12, and instead plot the dots. Draw a chart. You can draw it by hand. You can draw it in Excel. You can draw it in whatever analysis tool. And you know, as the, the, the subtitle of my book tries to explain, I'm trying to create a summary of the book in six words. React less, which gives us the time and the capacity to lead better, which allows us to then improve more. So, you know, again, I would say, you know, stop reacting to every up and down. Uh, stop reacting based on color coding of numbers. And instead, you know, I'll hold up an example for those who are looking um, on video. Plot the dots, plot the data, calculate the average, put that on the chart, calculate the lower and upper limits. And then as this example shows, when you see a data point outside of those limits, that's a signal worth reacting to. So again, stop reacting to the noise, do react to signals, do try to improve our system in, you know, in systematic ways. So here's an example of a chart that has no signals, but we can still try to improve performance of, in this case, it's a sales and marketing metric. The way we improve the system is not going to come from asking why data, one data point is better than another, we're not going to find the answers to how do we improve the system by asking why was that one data point worse than all the others. So a lot of it comes back to lean improvement concepts of you know, data is helpful. Data can sometimes help us prioritize our improvement efforts and can sometimes point us in the right direction. That is not a substitute for, um, as, as they would say in Japanese, going to the Gemba or going out to the shop floor or going out to the workplace. We still need to investigate problems. We need to talk to people. We need to see the process with our own eyes because again, that process and those systems are what lead to the metrics. So we need to look at both. We can look at our process and look at the results. And Mark, in your opinion, just to finish our talk, uh, where should be our effort to develop the market of the future now? to develop the market of the future now. Yeah. That is, um, that is a really good question. So, you know, I, I think a lot of time, there, there's two sides to this. I think when we're trying to be innovative, right? So um, a lot of times with Lean, we talk about improving the existing process through continuous improvement or sometimes through, you know, more radical improvement. But improving the current process is not always going to meet the future needs of our customers or our market or other markets that we can tap into. So there is a time and a place for listening to the voice of the customer, but there are many, many times in industries where um, innovative leaders have a vision and then they hope the market eventually comes around to it. So, you know, I think of an example, you know, a software company that I work with um, it's called Kinexus. We listen to the voice of the customer when they tell us about needs and wants for new features. But then there are times where, you know, we, we, we can't just do only what the customer says. Sometimes we need to understand the daily life of our customers. We need to understand some of the problems they face so that we can propose things to them that they might not have thought of. So, you know, I think of, you know, the voice of the customer is of, of course very important, but some of the needs of the customer are not always going to be articulated very clearly. So there's this collaborative process of understanding 
what's the need, what's the problem to be solved, what's the job to be done. And sometimes you've got to propose, sometimes you've got to lead the customer. And then of course, sometimes you've got to really listen to your customer and be responsive to them. So those are a few thoughts. I mean, that's that's a really it's a big it's a big picture question, um, but but hopefully a couple of those thoughts there are helpful. Sure, sure. Mark, thank you very much again for being with us at this journey. We're really proud to have you here. I, I'm sure that Brazilian people, our audience, will enjoy so much the opportunity to have your knowledge here. Uh, please feel free to talk to our audience and show them how can them keep in touch with you where they can find you. Um, so I can be found, my website is markgraben.com. Uh, I can be found on LinkedIn. That's a good place to reach me if you want to interact with me or if people have questions, um, I can be contacted there or my email address is just mark at markgraben.com. Thank you very much again. And yeah, don't forget you. the pizza invite, all right? <laughs> Bye bye. Oh, yeah, we'll we'll compare pizza recipes and we'll we'll continue uh, to improve our pizza making process. Right. Bye bye. See you. <laughs> bye.